Hello, good day, and welcome to Programming Language Compared. Hi, today we're going to be talking about complex numbers in Scala. As we've done before, we're going to be looking at some simple operations, you know, add, multiply, that sort of thing. And remember, I said all the JVM language, which includes Java, Groovy, and Scala, they do not have complex numbers built in. And we can see that by, if we go look at the types that Scala support, which I'll show you later, but um, to prove to you that it does not have complex number built in. But don't worry. We remember we found the complex library from Apache Commons math, and we've been using that, and we use it successfully in Java, and because um, the other languages are JVM languages too, which is Groovy, we were able to use it in Groovy. Added to that, we were able to add in Groovy a plus method and a multiply, but well, we didn't have to add multiply, and make it look like if we we're using the built-in, um, it was built into the language using those math operators, you know, plus, minus, and so on. Well, guess what? In Scala, we're going to be able to do the same thing, which is define um, methods that um, on complex that make us able to use the complex num um, class as if they were basic built-in numbers. Um, so we'll see that in a bit. Before we do that, though, we're going to want to prepare our directory for a code example. And what I'm going to do is copy the Groovy example, because what I'm going to do is build the Scala application using Gradle. Remember, we built our Groovy application using Gradle. So I'm going to build a Scala application using the same Gradle, um, pretty much the same Gradle build file. I'm going to make some small changes, but um, it's going to be pretty much the same. Now, in a previous video, I said that um, the directory structure for the Scala um, for Gradle looks very much like Maven, and that if you wanted to include um, Java file along with your um, Groovy project, you can easily do that by just putting a Java directory parallel to your um, Groovy directory. Well, here you just see me change my Groovy directory to Scala, and also I've created a directory Java with two packages in there, com and traversity. We'll use it later, but for right now, we're not going to focus on it. Um, right now, what I want to focus on is making our um, Scala application runnable. So how should we change our build file to be a, to build a Scala project? Well, if you look at it, it says it uses this plugin Groovy to build a Groovy plugin. So to build Groovy application. So no secret, maybe we can just change it to Scala. And we do that by um, just changing out, replacing Groovy with Scala. And we leave application plugin because we want the application support. But if we actually go over to the Scala website, um, to the Gradle website, sorry, and look for the documentation and then scroll down, you'll see that there are a number of plugins and one of them is for Groovy, um, for, for Scala. We click on that and it shows us that oh, we have to add the Scala plugin. And also it tells us which um, libraries do we need to compile? Remember, like Groovy, Scala also requires this supporting library. And so we have to specify that. So we really replace, um, the places where we had Groovy and then, of course, the appropriate Scala library. And then I, I replace the library we use for testing, even though I don't have any test code now. So now it's time to go modify our code. So we can do this by saying that we're using an object and that's like a singleton in Scala. Um, and then, of course, we have, we have to say define. Um, this is how we define a method in Scala for a class and main. And then for types, Scala put the name first, like in Go, and then the type afterward. And so we change that. And of course, our print um, is called like a function with parentheses. And then we comment out all the other things that we don't want to worry about right now. Since we know that our, um, our complex library is going to compile, we did that before. We're going to leave that there. We don't need to uncomment that. And since we already have it in a package directory, we're not going to move it out of the package directory, only to move it back in. So all this should work. So let's go ahead and test it out. So when we run Gradle task, we can verify that oh, actually we pulled in some Scala task. And if we run to Gradle run, we can see that oh, our Scala application is running. So this is good. Now that our Gradle Scala application is running, well, you remember I said that oh, we can include Java file. And we can do that with Scala application and with um, our Groovy application. So we're going to have this grid class. And we can write it in Java, put a Java file there, as you can see. And it's in a package parallel to our Scala, but different package, actually. And then now we're going to go back to our Scala just to show how easy it is to use Java from Scala and Scala from Java. But in this case, we're going to be using Java from Scala. Um, and so we're going to go back to our Scala application, import the greet class that we created in Java, and then, of course, call a method on it and test this, and this should run. Now, Google Gradle is taking care of all this for us. And if you look, you're going to see it says there it's compiling the Java code, and then it's going to compile our Scala code next. And then we run, and it works exactly like we would expect. 
the next thing we can do is now start on commenting some of this code that's specific to what we really want to do, which is playing with this complex library. And when we do that, we run, it works just fine. Um, now I'm going to speed up um, cleaning up the rest of the code. Um, but you can see it's very simple stuff I'm really doing. I'm just enclosing, um, using a print statement, enclosing whatever the expression we pass to print. Um, the other thing is because in Scala we have val and var, I'm going to change our variable to just say you val because they're not going to change once we initialize them except for one of them. So we'll get back to that one later. But again, if we go and run our code, everything um, seems to be fine except for multiply. And that's because we copied the groovy code and now we have to change that. But once we fix that, everything is fine indeed. And so now we can go back and uncomment the C variable and we see the problem is that we said C was a val and then we create another, we try to um, change it by saying C that adds. So that's a new complex number reference we're trying to put in C and so it's letting us know that oh, since C is a val, it cannot be changed. We can easily fix this by changing val into var to say we have a variable which can change and then of course when we rerun, that works. Now it comes time to working on putting built in um, using the math um, operators. And so if we run this and then we enable stack trace or turn on stack trace, of course we have to spell it correctly, um, we'll see that unlike Groovy, Scala doesn't really give us too much in terms of suggestion of what we need to actually implement. But there's a feature in Scala and it's called implicit class. And so all we have to do is implement in this implicit class, the method, the operators we want to override and implement for our complex class and they can be used. So here's the implementation, a simple implementation for an implicit class, which we can call complex improved, which is the complex number improved. And we're going to define two methods. We're just going to do plus and multiply since those are the only two we're using in our example code. And we could get rid of the groovy code because we don't need that. And now um, let's go run and see if run our code again and see if this works. Notice there's no explicit um, dependency between the complex that we can get from um, the I mean, there is a dependency in the implicit class that says, oh, this is the class you want to use. But once we do that, we don't have to do anything else in terms of um, modifying the complex class itself. Um, so let's see if this works. And so when we create um, objects, we don't have to create complex improve object. We just go ahead and keep using the same complex object and Scala take care of the magic. So that's what I mean. There was no explicit, um, besides writing the class, there was no explicit usage of it in our code. There's nowhere in our code where we actually say com use complex improve instead of complex. We just simply went ahead and use complex as we were using it before. And so that's it. Um, this is a little bit faster um, and shorter than the groovy example. And that's because by now we sort of understand what we're trying to do. So we really just had to do the things that was new, which is creating our implicit um, class and modifying our builds that Gradle file to build a Scala application. Other than that, it was pretty straightforward. Now I said, so I'm going to show you um, how you can prove that Scala doesn't have complex numbers. And so this is where you go to see that. Um, if you go back to the scala-lang.org website and you click on docs, and then you click on tour of Scala, and then you look at basic types, um, you can see um, there are the types in front of you and complex number is not included. All right. So, that's it for this video. Um, follow me on Twitter at Straversity1. Instagram, it's Straversity. Um, thanks for your time. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Thumbs up the video. Constructive criticism. Um, welcome. Um, see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.